So, Governor, growth is projected next year to be mildly above trend. You've uh, put up the uh, projections for inflation. These interest rates were designed for emergency times. What's the emergency now? Well, there's two things. Um, first, in terms of growth, uh, we have, you mentioned next year, well, let's look at growth the year after. We see it about 2.4 percent. That's the best judgment of the MPC. That's uh, slightly below the historic average, and that's coming after uh, on the heels of a worst recovery on record, so the worst recovery that we've had uh, since uh, records began more than a century ago. Uh, so we can be relieved that the economy is growing again, but we shouldn't necessarily be satisfied. Uh, the second thing in terms of inflation, uh, inflation is at 2.9% now. It's a product of a variety of one-off uh, shocks. Um, and the challenge we have is to get inflation back to that 2% target. That's our primary responsibility. We're well aware of that. And get it back, but get it back in a way that, to the extent possible, and the, ex the extent responsibly uh, that we support output and employment in the United Kingdom. Now, so let's, that brings us to what we announced today, which is uh, forward guidance, greater uh, certainty about the likely path of interest rates. Interest rates are at half a percent. They've been there for some time, as you referenced. Um, and what we're trying to do is give a greater degree of certainty to the people listening to this program, whether they're homeowners, uh, individuals, uh, business owners, um, a greater degree of certainty about how long or what are the conditions that are likely to influence when the bank starts to think about adjusting interest rates. And what we're saying very clearly is that we won't even begin to think about raising interest rates uh, until we see the unemployment rate go to 7%. Now, the unemployment rate is about 7.8% right now. So we need to make considerable progress. Um, if you look at that, just to, to make it a little more tangible, uh, over the course of the next three years with normal growth in the labor force, that's more than, considerably more than, three quarters of a million new jobs that would have to be added. Last point on this. We're doing this in a responsible way. We're disciplined by our requirements to meet the inflation target and, of course, uh, the need to ensure financial stability in this economy. Now, your predecessor told Savers that these 0.5% uh, historic mm -hmm. lows in interest rates were an emergency to stave off a depression. Mm. And now they're being told this is kind of like a almost semi-permanent state, or at the best part of a decade they will have been. What, I mean, what's your message to to those savers that are going to suffer even longer now? Well, let me, let me, let me say two things. First, uh, about the economy as a whole. Uh, we've started a recovery. It's very welcome, but we shouldn't be satisfied. What's important is that we secure this recovery, that it gains the momentum it needs, not just to grow jobs, uh, but to, uh, uh, to build the productivity that ultimately are going to give returns, uh, higher wages to individuals, uh, and move this economy forward on a sustainable basis. That's first and foremost. Now, with respect to savers, I have tremendous, and we have tremendous sympathy for savers uh, in this economy. They have done the right thing in the past. They put aside money. Now they're earning returns that are substantially below what they would have expected. Uh, we're doing several things for savers. The, the first is the best thing for uh, savers, ultimately, is a strong economy. A strong economy will mean higher interest rates. It will mean higher asset prices. That will come, and we're doing what we can to ensure that happens. Uh, the second thing is we need to get inflation back to target. It's been above target for the best part of five years, uh, and we're charting out a path to bring it back to target over the course of the next two years. That will also help savers. Uh, and the third thing, though, is, is to put this in a broader context, uh, because uh, the savers I know uh, and you know, uh, they, they, don't, they care more broadly about their children, their grandchildren, that they have jobs, that they have bright futures, uh, uh, futures for their neighbors, for their friends. Um, and that is, um, that is what a strong economy will deliver uh, for savers, but for all people across, uh, across they, the They UK. were told that this would be a temporary thing. It looks like it will last seven, eight years now. Well, the important thing is we, we have a couple of choices. Uh, we, uh, the, the choice is do we, uh, do we secure this recovery? Uh, do we keep the momentum that has been built up and, and keep moving forward? Or do we run great risks with it and, snuff, and, and the risk of snuffing it out and returning and, in fact, elongating the period of time considerably at which uh, interest rates are at rock bottom levels? You look at the situation in Japan. Uh, where there have been more than two decades. I was there at the start of it. I lived in Japan at the start of it. And two decades later, they're still in a situation where there are not returns to savers uh, because they weren't able to reach that escape velocity. They weren't able to, when there were the starts of recoveries in Japan, uh, to really get the momentum behind it. It's, uh, we're, this is something we're looking to avoid, obviously, in the UK. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why, one of the many reasons why uh, we've adopted uh, forward guidance. We don't want to have 
expectations building up of a premature withdrawal of interest rates, that, uh, of very low interest rates, um, that snuffs out this recovery. And as a consequence, means that savers and people looking for work go through a much longer period of being disappointed. You launched <coughs> this new Jane Austen £10 note. You must have noticed there was a, there was a quite shocking response to some of the campaigners that uh, you mm. launched that with. Are you quite shocked about what you're facing I, in Britain? W well, I, I, I think shocking is the right word. It was uh, uh, unconscionable, uh, the, uh, the, the, the reaction of uh, uh, what can only be a very small group of people uh, to uh, women, to citizens, um, who uh, rightly uh, expressed opinion. I mean, it, I, I, I think uh, I, I will leave it at, uh, yeah, it was shocking. Uh, it should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. and. Uh, uh, this institution, myself personally, uh, have uh, nothing but admiration uh, uh, for uh, Stella Creasy, for, uh, for um, uh, Caroline, uh, for, uh, for Mary and the other uh, individuals who really brought this issue uh, to a fore um, so that we could be as responsive as possible. And by the way, I'll say one other thing on the Jane Austen, I appreciate uh, your coming uh, to that launch because it's important that we get across to people across the country as much as possible. Uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it, doing it in a transparent way, and if we've made a mistake, that people understand that uh, we recognize that. Well, we look forward to seeing you on Twitter, Governor. That will probably be the answer. Uh, the <laughs> I'll, I'll get working on it. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Bye. you. Much appreciated. Yeah.